Well, New Zealand um, passed the COVID-19 Public Health Response Maritime Border Order 2020 uh, in June, and this actually um, consolidates and confirms an earlier order which was adopted in March, which basically um, closed New Zealand ports to foreign vessels subject to limited exemptions. Um, and what this order does, it sets out very clearly um, New Zealand's response with respect to which vessels are able to enter um, its ports and under what conditions. So it actually introduces um, the broadest set of restrictions on foreign vessels entering New Zealand ports um, really in peacetime. New Zealand does in fact have quite a strong tradition of exercising um, fairly firm port state control. So it traditionally takes um, quite a strong approach with respect to health base and sanitary and environmental measures. And of course, for over 30 years, New Zealand has in fact not allowed nuclear vessels uh, to enter its ports. So this measure does follow um, in a sort of a fine tradition, if you like, of um, New Zealand's fairly robust approach with respect um, to managing its ports and coastal waters. Yes, so there are quite a number of exceptions um, within the regulations. Um, this dress is um, stated clearly as an exception uh, under Clause 11, so the regulation does not apply to vessels in distress. And this would accord with New Zealand's more general international law obligations. So under international law, a vessel in distress um, is entitled to um, enter port. Um, in addition, there are actually quite a number of other exemptions, um, and they include ships, foreign ships, which um, are carrying all New Zealand citizens or persons otherwise entitled to enter New Zealand ports and that actually mirrors the um, um, rules relating to New Zealand ships so New Zealand ships are also permitted to enter New Zealand ports provided their passengers and crew are New Zealand citizens or persons that are entitled to enter um, and in addition there are six categories of ships that are exempt uh, so Antarctic ships are exempt um, a cargo ship arriving in New Zealand for loading, unloading cargo, um, fishing vessels that are unloading their catch, reprovisioning, refueling, um, or both, um, a foreign ship, foreign state ship that's been granted diplomatic clearance by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, um, and a ship where there is a compelling need to come to New Zealand for reprovisioning or fueling, um, or for the purpose of actually delivering a ship to New Zealand for repair, um, but they have to have permission. So there are some quite a number of exemptions. Um, for foreign ships which are allowed to, to enter New Zealand. Well, I think there are sort of two, two consequences, two immediate consequences uh, for this order and indeed orders like them. Um, first, whilst um, we accept that states do have a right to close their ports, um, this actually isn't stipulated under the Law of the Sea Convention. Um, so this practice of New Zealand and other states is actually very useful in clarifying the extent of that right. So it does make it very clear that foreign vessels do not have a right to enter port. Um, the second consequence, and particularly if this order continues um, for a length of time, um, is that we will do need we will need to start considering um, some of the human rights and the labour um, implications of these orders um, on people on ships, particularly crew on ships. Um, so this order and others like them does provide for basic human rights guarantees. It allows people to leave um, ships for court proceedings or to receive uh, medical treatment. Um, but nevertheless, um, confining people to ships uh, to port, um, not allowing them to enter port um, does potentially have implications for the welfare of seafarers and crew um, and we've certainly seen this in relation to vessels for example that haven't been able to find um, port um, in recent times so not particularly involving New Zealand but in other areas um, so I think the longer these restrictions go on and um, the more we will need to consider um, their longer term implications for particularly crew on board those ships.